coming there, YouTube brothers and sisters, friends and family. It's a beautiful morning out here this morning. And I was thinking about doing a little video about something else. And, um, of course, kind of how the Bible works. Looking for something else, and I found maybe why I was supposed to be in the Bible in the first place. God works in mysterious ways, but I found this. And I want to share with you guys a little word from the Lord. You're going to like this. And it's something that I personally tend to push. Um, it starts with something I tend to push. And that's fear not. And I just, again, today i seen video where it says it's like 365 times approximately that he says fear not or don't fear, you know. Right. So, let's start with one of them. <clears throat> It's Isaiah 54, verse 4. Fear not, for thou shalt not be ashamed, neither be thou confounded. Sorry, I'll just start that over. Fear not, for thou shalt not be ashamed, neither be thou confounded, for thou shalt not be put to shame, for thou shalt forget the shame, shame of thy youth, and shalt not remember the report reproach of thy thy widowhood anymore so it's kind of this is I should have started right at the beginning it's talking to a barren woman who couldn't bear a child um, almost should have started right at the beginning we're only two minutes in it's not that much all right we'll start at the beginning sorry Isaiah 54 Sing, O bearer, thou that didst not bear, break forth into singing, and cry aloud, thou that didst not travail with child, for more are the children of the desolate than the children of the married wife, saith the Lord. Enlarge the place of thy tent, and let them stretch forth the curtains of thine, inha thine habitations. Spare not, lengthen thy cords, and strengthen thy stakes. So he's saying, build a big tent. For thou shalt break forth on the right hand and on the left, and thy seed shall inherit the Gentiles and make the desolate cities to be inhabited. Fear not, for thou shalt not be ashamed, neither be thou confounded, for thou shalt not be put to shame, for thou shalt forget the shame of thy youth and, and shalt not remember the reproach of thy widowhood any more. For thy maker is thine husband, the Lord of hosts is his name, and thy Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, the God of the whole earth, shall he be called. For the Lord hath called thee as a woman forsaken, and grieved in spirit, and a wife of youth, when thou was, wast refused, saith the God. For a small moment I have forsaken thee, but with great mercies I will gather thee. In a little wrath I hid my face from thee for a moment, but with everlasting kindness will I have mercy on thee, saith the Lord thy Redeemer. For this is as the waters of Noah unto me. For as I have sworn that the waters of Noah should no more go over the earth, so have I sworn that I would not be wroth with thee, nor rebuke thee. For the mountains shall depart, and the hills shall be removed, but my kindness shall not depart from thee, neither shall the covenant covenant of my peace be removed, saith the Lord that has mercy on thee. O thou afflicted, tossed with tempest, and not comforted, behold, I will lay thy stones with fair colors, and lay thy foundations with sapphires, and I will make thy windows of agates, and thy gates of carbuncles, and all thy borders of pleasant stone, and all thy children shall be taught of the Lord and great shall be the peace of thy children in righteousness shall thy shall in righteousness shalt thou be established thou shalt be far from oppression 
for thou shalt not fear, and from terror, for it shall not come near thee. Behold, they shall surely gather together, but not by me. Whosoever shall gather together against thee shall fall for thy sake. Behold, I have created the smith that bloweth the coals in the fire, and that bringeth forth an instrument for his work, and I have created the waster to destroy. No weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper, and every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment thou shalt condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is of me, saith the Lord. That should be very comforting to everyone that is a believer of Jesus Christ as their Messiah and their Savior. He's telling you, I created the smith that blows the coals in the fire, that bringeth forth an instrument for his work, and I have created the waster to destroy. He created everything, including your enemy. And then he said, No weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper. Every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment thou shalt condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is in me, is of me, saith the Lord. That's it. His word is final. So fear not. For thou shalt not be ashamed. We won't be ashamed. Mm. Amen. I love God's word. It's uh, <clears throat> it's incredible the way that. He can speak to us what we need, when we need it, um, without us knowing what we're looking for, or what we're doing, you know. Anyway, I just wanted to make a short little video and bring that quick word to you guys and share it with you because there's probably a lot of people right now that are feeling a little pressed, a little beat up a little tired um, don't give up don't give up I was going to do a video about angels because I've always believed in angels and um, it's like a lot of things maybe well, 8 minutes sorry I'm blind but close um, eight minutes. There's still time, right? Um, angels are very real, you guys. Like angels, you know, like from the Bible, angels flying around, invisible, supernatural type, visible sometimes from another realm. Angels. They're real. Just as real as Bob, the neighbor that mows his lawn on Thursday. The angels are just as real as Bob mowing his lawn on Thursday. Um, probably more real than Bob. And we don't seem to get it for some reason as a society, as believers, a lot of times, I think. Do you believe the angels are real? Oh, yeah. Do you? Do you really believe angels are real? Or do you just believe that, yeah, angels are real, the Bible said they're real? You know what I mean? <clears throat> do you actually understand what I mean when I say do you really believe the angels that are here right now that you can't see <clears throat> because Jesus told Peter calm down buddy I could call 72,000 angels right now 
one angel took out like 186,000 troops or something. Angels are very powerful. They're real. It's not like TV, Guardian Angel, right? Everything in the world mocks the truth of the Lord. Okay? Um, they mock the truth of the Lord. If you were to look at something like uh, the craziest, wildest superhero guy on TV, maybe super villain guy, probably, right? That's not even close to representing an angel. Like an angel is beyond our imagination and powerful. Like a whole a whole army, hundred and eighty six thousand or something this one angel took out in the Bible. So they're very powerful, right? What are the angels doing in your life? You're a child of God. It's your heavenly father. What are the angels doing in your life? There's parts in the book, I'm not real well, well versed you guys, but there's parts in the book that will tell you about asking for protection and how to do it. And, you know, you've got to look for it. Um, Google angel. Uh, it's... That's not good advice. Google angel. They did all kinds of crap. And I could probably find verses if somebody wanted to contact me and find out which verses. But they're all through the Bible. Um, they're real. And what I'm getting at is I don't think that enough of us believers really, truly believe the Bible. We, we want to choose a couple pieces to believe in then that's cool and we're good with that and there's so much more <coughs> so much more the Bible's uh, well it's 1800 pages right the gospel's simple you believe Jesus is the uh, one and only begotten Son of God. He died on the cross, saved our, paid for our sins, and was buried three days later, was raised, and he sits now at the right hand seat of God. That's it. You're saved. If, you're, if you believe that in your heart, you profess it, you're saved. That's what the Bible says. You believe Jesus did it. When you fully believe Jesus did it all, did it all because there's a whole bunch of false gospels that lead you away from the truth and the truth is that Jesus on the cross paid your sin debt he did it all his blood was the final sacrifice there's no more he is the lamb he's the final sacrifice he paid for all our sin he took God's wrath for us in, in the Garden of Gethsemane in that cup it's paid it's finished he did it all I, I can't save myself I can't do anything to save myself and I can't stop doing something to save myself just Jesus can save me and he did I just got to believe in him. That's it. It's all about faith and trust. Well, trust is the basis of faith. Because you have, in order to have faith, you have to believe. You believe something you can't see or prove. Like God. And Jesus being his son. Because it's very important you have to believe Jesus is the son of God. You have to believe that. God says, I believe on my son, I'll give you everlasting life, he says, John 3, 16. Right? 
What is the will of the Father? To believe on the Son. The Bible wouldn't say that all over the place if it wasn't the truth, man. Only to the way to the Father is through the Son. Stuff like that. Why? Because He wants you to know the Son. Why? Isn't that kind of obvious? God made His Spirit manifest as one of us to live forever with us, to allow us forever a chance to live forever with Him, with God of of the universe, of Almighty God. We can live with Him through Jesus Christ, His Son, His one and only begotten Son. That's it. There's no beads, incense things. And I'm not trying to mock anyone's anything. I'm just saying, there is none of that. That isn't how you are saved. None of that will save you. None of it. It doesn't save you. It just doesn't. I tried for so long to repent of my sins to be saved. How are you supposed to do that? The only way a person truly repents of sinning is death. Pretty much. If you're alive, you're going to sin in some sort of way. So now what? you got to start over again and again and again and again? No. But it's a, a useless thing you chase. It's a life of fear. That or there's the truth. The simple truth. And when I learned the truth, the fear was gone. I'm not going to hell. <laughs> you can tell me or anything you want. Do it or say anything you want. I know where I'm going. I know my lot in life, my destiny in the future. It's something that you can only <clears throat> only truly understand when you also believe on Jesus as the Messiah. He is the Savior. Once you get that, everything changes. In the Bible it says you get a new heart and mind. That's so true. For me it was instant on some things, like the fear, gone. Terrified my whole life, thinking I was going to hell. Just gone. Peace, and telling you. And then that just progresses. That grows as your, uh, what was it? Those he pre predestines, he calls, and those he calls, he justifies. Those he justifies, he sanctifies, and those he sanctifies, he glorifies, I think. That's how it goes. God calls you. He's been calling me, he called me, brought me here. We have to realize that, back to the original thing, that things like angels are real. What the Bible talks about, what God speaks about, that's real. I feel like people today are living in a fantasy world. A little bubble, you know, living in your happy little bubble or your unhappy little bubble or, you know, and we forget God. And it does say in the book of Revelation there that in the last days it'll be as it was in the days of Noah. And in the days of Noah, God looked down on earth and saw nobody had any time for God. Nobody cared. They were busy. They were doing their own life, doing their own thing. Noah, him and his boys and their family, they were working hard trying to build that boat because God said build a freaking boat, build it big. So he did. He listened to God. He walked with God. He talked with God. He loved God. 
blood taken and his family. <coughs> It's estimated that there's, well, there's different estimates, but they estimate that there was a lot of people on Earth when uh, Noah's flood happened. And um, it's sad to say, but you got to remember, man, like only eight people got on that boat. Eight people, oh, a lot of animals, but eight people right on that boat, so. When the Bible tells you stuff like, as in the days of Noah, and as in the days of Lot, and stuff like that. It's the Bible. Um, I didn't write it. I just read it, and Jesus says it's a narrow gate, and he's the gate, so the only way to eternally know Jesus and know God be able to be in the kingdom of heaven in the kingdom of God on the new earth there will be a whole new earth and new heavens and God will bring his kingdom his personal kingdom to earth the new Jerusalem if you want to go in and know God you've got to go through his son Jesus Christ, you have to know Jesus. If you don't know Jesus, you're lost. The Bible actually says some will, in the book of Daniel 7 maybe, I'm not sure where, but some will wait to uh, shame and eternal contempt. Some will wait to eternal life. It talks about coming up out of the dust, the dead and the dust. <clears throat> so, you want eternal life with Jesus Christ? It's real tough. You need to believe that He was the Son of God and that He died on that cross to pay our sin debt. And when He was buried three days later, he raised from the dead, and he now sits at the right hand of God in heaven. If you believe that, truly believe that in your heart, that he is the only Son of God, and he died and was raised again three days later, you're saved. You're saved. That's what the Bible says, you're saved. After that moment, after that moment, then you can grow in the Lord. Once, you, once you're part of a family, he, he just, he'll help you grow. Ask and he shall receive, you know. Anyway, this video is getting pretty long. But, I don't know, it's important. I guess it's more important than how long the video is. Because <clears throat> I see a lot of people aren't really believing, I think. They're not really believing the Bible. You know, we like to stick to the parts that are fun or, or um, encouraging, you know. Oh, well, I'm in the Gospels of Mark and Matthew, Luke and, Luke and John, you know, and, or whatever, or Corinthians, or Romans, you know, or lots of them. But there's a lot of skipping, and there's a lot of, yeah, well, that doesn't apply to me. And, uh, a lot of picking, choosing. <clears throat> and I've been told I can't do that. Like when I want to apply something to whatever 
that's me applying the Bible to instead of the Bible applying to my life or something. I don't know. I don't remember. Stuff. To me, this whole book is the Word of God. Um, some of it is is inspired through other men, right? Men wrote some of it. Some of it are the words of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. And he said, every word I speak is the word of my Father. So that's God speaking. This is God's Spirit, right? All right, then. Why would any of that not be applicable to me today? That's the word of God. I've had this discussion lately, too, because it's been bothering me. There's a lot of... Um, <clears throat> Sorry, there's a lot of um, division I've noticed in the saved community because a lot of people are lordshippers and a lot of people are Calvinists and a lot of people are these other religion things and false gospels that are just all over the place, a little off here, a little off there. And yes, grace through faith, once saved, always saved, that's a, it's the right doctrine. I believe it 100% of my heart. But I don't think we should be attacking these other people because they're just lost. I mean, I was lost too. I was seeing that other people were saying, like Lord Shipper types or something, I'm not sure if that's the right word because I don't know what all these things are, right? But like where you read the words of Jesus to his want-to-be disciples and he says things like, uh, here's the key word if, if you want to be my disciple you must deny yourself pick up your cross and follow me and so then the guys on these videos will go you must deny yourself and pick up a cross and follow him and then you must also give away everything you have and give it to the poor and go out without any extra clothes and Yeah, that's what he was talking to them people at that time because that's what they had to do. And he said, don't worry about it. I'll cover it. And like he said later on in the book, when I told you to go out with just a pair of shoes and a coat, did you ever want for anything? No, Lord, of course not. Because he'll cover it. And he will. But that's for a saved disciple. That's not for your salvation. These people push that crap for your salvation. You have to do that to be saved. No, you don't have to do it. Once you're saved, you're saved. The rest of it's your discipleship. It's your walk with the Lord, your personal walk with the Lord. That's all it is. So let's look at what is a disciple supposed to do? Deny yourself, pick up your cross and follow him. How do you follow the Lord? That would be to follow his teachings, to do as he says to do or in his case to do as he does share the gospel that's what we're told to do share the gospel that's what we're told to do as Christians believers of Jesus Christ and as the Savior we're told to share the gospel it's not that tough guys um, we overcomplicate everything like there was people Jesus wasn't impressed with the Pharisees right there's a lot of people God wasn't impressed with he wiped out many armies and stuff lots of people but us as disciples we're not we're not God I don't know that man's heart, the Lord Chipper guy that's so horrible, or the backwards guy, or the whatever guy, right? Because I know there's a lot of people, it, it's hard on them because they've been from being trapped by Lord Chipping or um, works gospels and stuff, and so it's hard on them. But yeah, you were there too, right? So let's extend that grace and mercy a little bit more and try to show these people the truth, right? Now, there's also stuff in the Bible that covers that. 
it says go a couple times once you give them the truth a couple times then you can just mark them and avoid them you tried you did it you planted the seed now it's let someone else water it it's between them and God they know the truth now right it's one thing to not know the truth and to be deceived but once you hear the truth from somebody with the Holy Spirit telling you the true gospel and again the true gospel and you're denying it mark and avoid there's another realm people we don't know why we're told to do it this way we're just told to do it that way so let's do it that way right that's how I look at it it's not personal it can be personal but it's not personal it's what the Bible says we're supposed to do so let's try to do it it's the same thing with the law thing I'm not under the law it's the law of God it's the word of God his commandments Jesus' commandments those are their commandments that's very to me simple to understand uh, do I have to live under the law for my salvation no no the law is a guidebook that's it if you want a good happy successful type life if you want the life that the Lord wanted for you try to follow his guidebook it's good advice. Like, everybody takes it always to the maximum. Oh, you're a works guy. I don't know. Call me whatever you want. I don't care. I really don't. As long as you know the true gospel, at the end of the day, I'm happy. You can call me whatever you want. I like to try to follow Jesus' advice and his... If I'm a disciple of Jesus, why wouldn't I want to try to follow his teaching? To me, that just makes sense. That's not being under the law. That's following my teacher. You can call it whatever you like. I'm not forcing you or anyone else to do anything. I'm just trying to share the truth with people. As I see it. I mean, I could be wrong. But this is just how I see it. I mean, I've, I've saw in... in Joseph maybe um, where he says about don't stray to the left follow my commandments don't stray to the left or to the right so that you'll have a prosperous way wherever you go you'll prosper well that's not very mean sounding if you follow the law don't move to the left or the right wherever you go you'll prosper ooh that's not very condemning why not? Why would it be condemning? The Lord says, In His Son you're saved. Salvation. No more condemnation. That's what He says. No more condemnation. Why do we read anything in this book being condemning if you're saved? We're not condemned. We're saved. So that means everything you read in this book should make you feel good. This is a story. God's story of earth and humankind one of which we are one of and his angels and his adopted family one of which we are one of and all of his miracles and his wonderful way of thinking and his amazing way of thinking where it's so much higher than like we cannot even imagine God's level of thinking well I've wandered all over the place in this video and I should probably end it by now but I do want to make sure that we remember to fear not um, we are children of God God Almighty like he said all those weapons that you're scared of when people bring in against you, he created the man that created the weapon. You don't think he can protect you? 
And Jesus told Peter, don't worry about it. 72,000 angels are ready right now. We're good. Right? Fear not. I love you, brothers and sisters. I really, truly love you all. Um, and if you're some stranger out here watching, I love you too. That's something that God showed me and gave me as a gift. <clears throat> is the ability to love everyone as a soul. Um, even if I don't actually like you. Don't have to like you to love you. Right? Alright guys. Again, I love you all. Have a great day.